seems legit. Hi Legitimates and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making the Beach Coma Bag by Needle and Anchor. Uh, it's really cute and it only has very few hardware. So this pocket, you can put your hand all the way through and I love that. And then as far as hardware concerns, you've got four gate rings, a zipper end, which if you want to, you could do vinyl instead, and two zipper pulls, one for the outside here, and then one for your inside pocket there. So if you would like to see how to make this bag, please stay tuned. Right, let's get started. So I'm going to start with my exterior accent and lining piece. Um, so this will be like a cute little pocket. So the first thing I want to do is stitch along this edge here. So I'm just going to line it up and stitch down, move that out of the way. So that's one edge. So this is the edge of the pocket part. So you want this to be glorious. I can see that I haven't cut it very straight, so I'm just straightening it up as I stitch, which is also fine. I mean, you could have a curved pocket if you want to, either or. Then we're going to flip it out like so. And this is now the pocket. So I'm going to go up to a stitch length and I'm going to go all the way up to four. And then I'm going to just roll it in my fingers till I get it right on that edge and top stitch. I'm still going to back stitch because I'm going to lock it in. If you don't like back stitching, you can instead uh, tie it off manually. But just something to lock it all in place so it doesn't start coming undone before we finish making it. So that's one side there. Now let's do the other side. I'm a little bit obsessed with um, contrasting thread colours today, or this week. Uh, I've been making a few like that because I think they're pretty. Okay, so now we've got this beautiful top stitching. We're going to take one of our main body pieces and we're just going to line this up on it and I'm going to tack it in place. So I'm just going to top stitch it like an eighth of an inch and just hold it all together so it stays in place. So that's the bottom and then I also want to tack the top. You don't have to back stitch for this because it's only a temporary hold um, but I, for the most part a back stitch anyway. So now you should be able to pick it up and it's one piece and then you've got this cute little pocket. Now if you want to you could sew right down the center and have two little pockets um, but I actually think one bigger pocket would be more useful um, as if you take off your jumper you'll be able to like thread it through. So I'm gonna leave it as an open pocket because I see more value in it that way but you can do whatever you like. Then we need to come into here and grab our top bands. Now I've cut two red and two black. Um, so one color is going on the inside and one color is going on the outside. So I'm doing a black on the outside and red on the inside, uh, which you saw at the top at the start of this video, but I just haven't done it yet. So we're gonna put these together, right sides together. Now if you want to, you can clip it with your wonder clips to make sure it doesn't shift because I hate it when things shift on me. It's very, very rude. Right, all along the edge like that. We're gonna go back to adjoining stitch length, which is two and a half for me. And then we're gonna stitch. So we're gonna stitch and back stitch. Now here's a bit thicker because we're going over that pocket. And then we're gonna back stitch. We're also going to grab our back panel because it has a matching band so that both sides of the bag are the same. And if you want to, you could put another one of these pockets on that side. Uh, or you could put a zipper pocket or you could leave it plain. I'm leaving mine plain because I just want to see some of the print. But each to their own. And I'm just going to chain stitch these. Back stitch. I'm going to go up to four stitch length again. 
And then I am going to top stitch along the band just to make it pretty and flat. We like flat and stitching it down will help it be flat. the same to the other one. Now I'm chain stitching these to save thread and time. So again fold it up and top stitch. Now if you um, are on a domestic and you're worried about the thickness you can actually open that seam out so it's flat and then you still only top stitch the top half though. So if you top stitch the bottom we're going to start getting to the pocket here. Also, if you're working in an area and this is annoying you hitting stuff, just do a few stitches and then trim it off. And then you can continue stitching without it banging into stuff. It doesn't really bother me. I'm used to it now. But it's also why my machine is not up against the wall like it used to be. Because, uh, you know, then you've only got X amount of space. So that's our front and our back. I will need to go and iron the interfacing onto the back of those. Um, so we'll pop that aside and I'll get up and do it in a minute. I'll do it basically when I run out of bobbin because then I can do it at the same time. So we're going to take our lining slip pocket and I'm going to do the same stitching. So we're going to go back to adjoining stitch length. And I'm doing this one now just because it was next on the pile. Trim, other side. Backstitch. Make sure your needle's lifted up so that your thread's not caught. My thread's caught. I will deal with that in a second. There we go. So again, we're going to turn it through. Now this one might need some ironing to get nice and flat. So we'll add that to our ironing pile. Because I want to get a really nice seam on the edge of that. So, add that over there. And let's do our strap since it's... Oh, these are my handles, sorry, not my strap. They're the main body, we're not doing them yet. So we're going to flip this over. And I'm going to use 12mm uh, or half inch double sided tape. Uh, a lot of you ask what brand I use. I don't have a favourite brand. I just grab what's available. I live in a pretty small country town and have to drive a long way. So most of the time I buy the Express It from Spotlight. Uh, but I have been known to also use the uh, like $2 shop brand ones. They all pretty much work the same. It's just the Express It ones come in 50 metre rolls. And there's usually only 10 meter rolls at um, like $2 shops and the reject shop and stuff. So we're going to fold both sides. This is a really good cool skill to learn. You use your fingers to hold it in place in the middle. Then you pinch together and push down flat. And if you do it that way, every time you will get it right in the middle. It does take a little bit of practice to get fast at it. But I do love that I taught myself this. If you go back to a lot of my older videos where I started doing it, it used to take me a very long time. Um, but with practice, I have got a lot faster. And I do like this method a lot more. So, just a thought. Together and down. Together and down. Beautiful. Um, how much of this did I cut? So this is going to be an accent over that gap. Um, I cut them longer just because I wasn't sure what size I actually... Well, it wasn't that I needed to know what size. I just cut them as the rest of the strip for what I was doing. So I'm going to go back up to four because that's what um, stitch length I'm working with for the rest of the bag. And we're going to start at the end. And I'm going to stitch over. Now, if you plan on using strap ends on here, you don't have to fold the raw edge under. 
Um, I am yet to, to decide if I want to do that or not. So I've tucked the raw edge under in case I decide I don't want strap ends. And then we're just going to stitch along and make sure it's in the center of the strap. Now, looking at this now, I possibly should have done a different color strap, uh, like black. But it will still work just fine. The reds are actually very close. Uh, and when you ask where I got this fabric from, I'm pretty sure this is the one of the ones from America. So I don't think you can get it. I mean, I'm sure you can get it in Australia, but I have no idea where. All right, I'm just going to cut a little bit past. I'm going to throw that bit out so I have no use for it. Tuck under the raw edge again, making sure it's lined up. Like so. And needle down, pivot across, pivot and down. And back stitch. Trim off all the tail. And that's one lovely handle. And then on the back, because I've used contrasting thread, you get this nice little accent with the stitching. It's also a really good way to test your skills using a contrasting thread, because you have to be consciously aware that people will notice every stitch. Uh, but there's no reason to be nervous. You should still try it. It turns out wonderfully. All right, that was crooked. That was my fault. To the center and down. Center and down. Just work your way along. like so. Um, when you're putting an accent on top like this, it actually doesn't matter if it's not perfectly in the center because nobody will see it. Um, I have ironed this. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little bit bigger right here. So I think we're up to the point where I need to iron because I need to bring that in. It's too wide and I can see that it kind of bulges. I don't know if you can see that, but I can and it's going to annoy me. And there's not enough at the other end to get away with it. So I'm going to have to re-iron this because clearly I wasn't paying attention. Um, I will also put, I will also iron all of these bits as well so that we can um, move forward. And I don't think I'll have to get up again. All right. So this is lifting because I left it too long, but these things happen. But I have straightened this out, so I'm much happier now. So let's tuck under the raw edge. And then I'm just going to line it up. I'm just going to ignore the lifting parts for a minute, and I'm going to stitch that side first. And that will solve most of my problems. So the downside to when it lifts is it means I'm just going to have to do it in sections like this. So we put it on. Stitch. Make sure the needle's down. Smooth over the next section. I mean, you could glue it together and then you're guaranteed for it to never move, but you also then have to wait for the glue to dry. So. Not so bad. Oh, I just ran out of bobbin thread. Bye. Right, so I've made sure I've got a nice long tail. And I'm just going to go back a few stitches. And I'm going to go in, back, and then forward. Re-stick this down, because again, it's lifting. Lay this on top.
needle down, home stretch. So this is the same tape and the same vinyl that we used for the first one, but this one just wants the lift. See, so it's not necessarily your products that are the problem. Sometimes it just wants to do what it wants to do. And there's nothing you can do about it. Across the end. Now you don't have to go across the end if you're putting strap ends, although it is the quickest way to get to the other side. Now as I get closer to this, I'm going to cut off all these tails so that they don't get all muddled up. Like that, in the bin, flick it down, continue on. And then when we get back to the start, I'm going to backstitch. Alright, another handle, complete. Now let's top stitch this now that it's been ironed. Stitch, back stitch. I'm just using a normal stitch length for this. Uh, because of the print, you won't notice the stitching. It's more just there to keep the edge nice and crisp. You don't really see it because it's mainly white on white. Uh, if it was a super contrasting colour, I would probably extend the top stitch. Actually, my top stitch is already on four. Never mind. Uh, but my point is I didn't deliberately change it to a top stitch length. Alright, joining stitch length. Now we're going to grab our lining piece. Well, one of our lining pieces. The other side's going to have a, a zipper pocket, so it has occurred to me I am going to have to get up to fix that, but that's fine. So again, we're going to just lay this down and I'm going to baste it all together. A big part of how I construct bags is removing as many pieces as possible in the quickest way possible. So this has turned three pieces into one. I like that. Then I'm just going to top stitch it along the very top, again within the seam allowance. So I tend to just do an eighth of an inch to guarantee it's in the seam allowance, but you can do it a little bit bigger. It's your choice. So again, with the pocket. Now again, if you want to, you can. we might split this one down the centre just for something different. Because the, out, the outside one's open, this will now give us two inner pockets. I'm just going to grab a ruler and my Chaco pen, which I filled with blue. I did a refill on them. Don't throw them out when they're empty. You can just refill them with chalk powder. So I used the blue powder from my pounce that I got. Um, if you don't know what a pounce is, it's like, it's like a powder puff that you fill with chalk dust. Um, so when you're using stencils, you can just kind of fluff the powder on top and it marks the pattern without having to manually draw the entire thing. Makes it much quicker. I did it when I did a um, quilting on some vinyl stuff. So now we've got two little pockets. Wonderful. Um, if you wanted to make these more noticeable, you also, instead of stitching this down, you could have put some vinyl across there to see it too, but I didn't do that and that's okay. Okay, let's eliminate some more pieces. So I'm going to grab my gusset pieces. So I've got them all clipped together. So I've got lining and exterior. And on the exterior ones, I have already put my foam, which is wonderful. So we're just gonna take the small one and then attach the sides, which are the two long ones. Now I am going to chain stitch this because there's two sets. It'll make it easier, so we're going to stitch and back stitch like that, and then grab this one and do the same. And then cut the first one off so that I can do the other side. So this way, I know it may seem more complicated now, but it ultimately is quicker. Cut 
this one off. So again, short side, which is the base. You can put bag feet in this as well. All right, so that's that gossip piece done. So we've just turned six pieces into three. But now what I want to do with this piece is I'm going to open out this seam here and we're going to top stitch either side of it to make it open and flat. Definitely don't skip this step if you're on a domestic because it's going to make this whole seam a lot flatter. So I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch each side. One, whoops. It's alright, nothing fell over. Two. And then we're going to do the same to this seam. Yoink. One. Spin. And two. So that's both being decorative and we'll keep that seam flatter for later when we join all the bag together. We can actually do our exterior one now because our exterior pieces are done. Um, so again, I've already put the foam on. This is our front, this is our back. It doesn't necessarily matter and th unless this is printed. Um, but because mine's a solid, it doesn't matter. But just consciously think about that if you are doing a print because um, what you want to happen is this is the front of your bag so when you lift it up like this you want the print to be this way so you want to put the top of the print against this part so that when you lift the bag up you see it that's just one of those random things that you may want to know And I'm just finding the center of everything because, as always, it's the easiest way to do this. Right, center, center, center. Doesn't matter which one you start with. We're going to match those centers right sides together. Let's get some clips. Some of my clips, clips are on vacation in a different container, if you're wondering why I'm so low. And I broke like four yesterday. It's not due to how I use them. It's just these cheap clips don't last as long as the other ones. These ones I've had for like six years. And they're still doing great. They are the Clover brand that you can buy at Spotlight. But they are quite expensive for a few clips. But I think they're worth it because they last longer. So I try and have a combination of both. Because I don't think I could um, justify 200 of the expensive clips so we do a combo and then I always tend to use the more expensive ones on like tricky areas because the spring in them is better so I, I work from the center along the flat and then the top down and get towards the corner you always do the corner last because uh, it's quite easy to stretch it out of shape and out of place and then it won't fit So just something to think about and then it should all just fit in lovely like so like that so yes I've used a lot of clips I regret nothing we use clips to make our life easier and if clips hold everything in place that is therefore easier so we're gonna stitch and we're gonna back stitch And I'm going to clean up my clips as I go because otherwise they annoy me. And the pattern is designed so that the, um, the foam is not in your seam allowances. Now, if you don't iron your foam on and you stitch it in, what you'll want to do is you'll want to cut it the same size as the exterior. And then you can just use an overlocker to squish the edges down. Um, I will do a video like that one day soon. Where I show you the alternate way and I'll still be using the iron on bag foam I just won't iron it on some people don't like to iron their foam on 
each their own, I say. Right, so now what you want to do is you want to flip it out and check it to make sure that there's no pinches in your corners. I'm not really worried about straight areas because, you know, straight, straight. You want to turn it out. It looks like, see how there's a little divot there? That's not actually a pinch. It's just a curve. So if you kind of Tory squish it, you can see there's no actual pinch there. It's just trying to trick me. So now that I'm happy with that side, we're going to repeat ourselves with the other side. And we always want our clips to face our gusset piece. I know I say a lot of things in this, like a lot of the same things each video, um, but it's good if you recognize it. Major your brain's listening. And also, bags are pretty much constructed the same way. And the more different patterns you make, the, the more your brain's going to recognize the pattern of building bags. Um, so like right now, I don't even have the pattern out for this. I didn't even read through the instructions because most bags, now that's not all, some of the ones that have new tricky techniques I've never seen before, I do have to read those. Um, but generally speaking, bags all get put the, together the same way. And because I've made hundreds, if not a thousand, it just makes sense. I actually wonder how many bags I've made. Surely I'd have to be close to a thousand in six years. Don't know. Definitely couple of hundred if nothing else and yes I should probably keep track but I don't all right next one click done now this time you want to be more careful in your corners because the fabric's going to fight you and you're more likely to not pay attention and get a little pinch. So the second side is always trickier than the first because you've got to make sure this all gets out of the way and make sure it doesn't pinch in the corners. Which is why we use so many clips all the time. because I'm fighting this other half a lot more. Because you want to make sure it manoeuvres around the corner, otherwise you'll get a pinch if you're not being kind of flowy. I don't know a better way to describe that. But to get a nice corner, you want to make sure that the fabric, you move it so that you don't get a pinch. And I might have, so we are just going to check. In fact, we might turn it out so I can see. And so you can see. I could turn a light on and check without it. But let's just turn it through and see if I got a pinch. I don't actually know if I did or not. So it's always better to check. No, we're good. Right, we're good. I thought there might have been one here, but there's not. It tricked me, but in a good way. So I am happy with that. Now that I've checked all my seams, we're going to turn it back inside out. Oh, and I just ripped off that bag foam, but that's okay. It will iron back on later when I get my little iron. Zigzag, actually, no zigzag scissors. We will use them. I, just, I love my zigzag scissors. I know they're called pinking shears for those that are going to try and correct me. It's just more fun to say zigzag scissors, right? Now you really you want to trim the seam allowance off for lots of reasons. First one is the curves will sit nicer. Second one is your lining will be able to get closer to the seam and therefore sit flatter. Always trim off the seam allowance. Unless it's like an eighth of an inch, which I doubt it ever would be, but just saying. Right. Sometimes I get it off in one. Clearly I didn't this time. And that's okay. You can also do it directly over a bin. 
then you have to be less worried. All right. Trim all of this off. Yes, it takes a minute, but I do really believe it is worth doing. All right, so now there's not as much sticking out, which means when we turn it through and get our lining, it can butt right up against the seam pretty much. Just make sure you don't actually stick, cut your stitches. I have done that once or twice. It's not ideal. All right, let's do our other side with our zipper pocket, and then we can make our I'll zip a bit and then we're good. All right, hardware. Also, this bag only takes two zippers and four gate rings. For anyone that doesn't know what a gate ring is, it's a round ring that has a spring-loaded part that opens up so that you can slip things onto it. Love a good gate ring. Now, I also haven't picked a zipper tape yet. We want something gold because we're using gold hardware. So I could go black with gold, red with gold, white with gold. And in my giant zipper tub, I can't see any of those. So this is my personal stash. The backup is always black. Um, or I could do a grey, I suppose. I could do white. White would be fun, actually. Let's do white because I seem to have a lot of it. Or I could do white with gold. Now let's just do white. I never pick my zip until I'm pretty much up to using it because I have it living next to me so that I can change my mind and grab it as I need it. Oh, I'm also going to use a zipper end for this. I just remembered. So we're going to need to cut a piece of zipper as wide as the zipper pocket. Now different people make different zipper pockets. I've done a Tory pocket because I just, I like to. But you could make a wider one because this panel, see how the panel is that much wider? You could make it quite wide if you wanted to. I'm also, while I'm here, going to grab this. And you just, this is the zipper thing. I'm just going to make it a bit longer. You can eyeball it, make it as long or as short as you want. I've, again, I've made so many bags, I can eyeball a lot of things. But the pattern does tell you what you need. So if you don't want to just wing it like I do, that's okay. At no point am I going to tell you you have to. I'm just letting you know that you can. Because winging things is the starting point for when you start altering patterns. Because you're just going to wing it. Even something as subtle as changing or adding a zipper pocket is like a stepping stone towards designing patterns. Because when I first started bags, I thought there was absolutely no way that I could do it. Genuinely believe that. I'm like, I can't draw on the, I can't do computer designs. I won't ever be able to create something. But you live and you learn. Practice and repetition, like everything. All right, so we've got our center point, And I've got the center point on the half that has the pocket drawn on it. I also never interface my zipper pockets. Now, you don't want this too high because we're going to have that, um, the zipper part on the inside. So I'm just going to do it about an inch up from the bottom. Now I'm telling you this because technically this is not part of the pattern. This is just me winging it. So if you want to put it where I, because you, if you put it all the way up here, A, there's a seam allowance and B, there's going to be the interior zipper. So you still want to be able to get to it. So I have personally found you need to put them a bit lower. That's just me. So we're going to stitch and back stitch, and then we're going to sew along the line 
and back stitch, pivot all the way around, let's do the other side, stitch, back stitch, back stitch, trim off the tails, and this little stitch that's called a jump stitch down that end, it distorts us trying to turn it out nice and smoothly, so you should really chop it off. It's just not worth keeping it there, to be honest. Grab some scissors, and I'm just going to go over the edge of it so I can pinch the fabric and snip in between the two lines that we just sewed. And then, wherever that hole is, we're going to cut, and then about three quarters of an inch to an inch from the end, we're going to triangle out those corners. I don't know what it's officially called. I call it tri triangling it out. You can call it whatever you like. All right. You want to have little triangles. So now I'm going to go and iron this. So I'm going to iron it up so it's flat, down so that seam's flat, push it through and iron it all flat. It's just a quicker way to get that seam right on the edge. Right. It is lovely and flat now, as you can see. So now I'm just going to take my zip. I always have mine closing to the left, so I'm going to place it that way in front of me. Make sure that this is open flat and just lay it over the top. Making sure that that edge is lined up and the zipper is in the center of the gap. And then I'm just going to stitch, back stitch. Now I did that on a white bit so that you're less likely to see the stitches. If you're doing a contrasting thread, you might want to pull it through to the back and tie it off. Stitch along, needle down, pivot down over the end, needle down, pivot again. It's all about the pivot. And then back stitch when you get back to the start of your stitches. And we're going to chop off this tail. Then your zipper pocket should just fall perfectly into place. So I'm going to stitch the side shut, but not the bottom. That's going to be like our last seam on the back. We're going to stitch and back stitch. And stitch and back stitch. seen like this backstitch is definitely quicker. Ta -da! So now you should have a pocket that you can stick your hand through. Um, open it, stick your hand through it. So I actually do this quite a lot. A lot of people get worried when you've left the zipper shut. It's not a big deal. It is easily fixed. I showed it in my previous video. But if you're worried, always put your hand through it so that you know that it's open. Problem solved. Right, so now we're going to put that aside because we can't sew these onto the gusset until we've done the other bits. So I need these and this and this. I've clipped everything together just so I can keep track of what's what. Um, also, if you want it to be easier, this goes with that. That Suzanne. That used to be an ad here in Australia. All right, so I'm gonna take these little bits. Oh, whoops, drop my scissors. My cart's backwards and I just haven't fixed it yet. So the scissors get stuck on the other side and I can't reach from here. So I'm just gonna line these up and do them like a caterpillar because it's quicker than cutting each one individually. Also, the sticky tape then gets all the way to the edge. So then we're just going to chop them up like so. Happy days. And then I'm going to fold both edges into the center and we're going to top stitch. Now you can top stitch in the center or on the edge. I think I'm going to do along the edge. So the outer edge here. You could also do both. 
if you wanted more stitching as an accent. Nothing wrong with stitching as an accent. And if your sticky tape isn't going to stick it, I'm just assuming mine will, you can just do one and then sew it, and then do one and then sew it. And I'm still going to chain stitch these, which is why I'm sticking all four of them at once, because chain stitching is ultimately quicker. All right. So, up to a level or size 4 stitch, we're going to go down and then get the next one. And I'm going to stitch it right side up because it's prettier. And then I'm going to chop it off I'm going to do the other side. And I don't even have to separate them. I can literally just sew them one after the other like that. And then you've got to get that first one that we did the other or the last one because it didn't have the stitch. All right, they're all joined together and then you can just come along and separate them. Easy peasy and trim off the tails of the first one. I'm not worried about those little extra bits that you're not going to see them. So then we're going to grab our top band. Pop that down there. I'm going to find the centre because, again, we're going to need it. And centres are just easier. Centre, centre. And centre. Ta-da! We're doing both sides again. It'll become more apparent all later. Then I'm going to grab a ruler to make sure that I do all of this evenly. Now these are your handles. So you don't want them all the way to the edge and you don't want them all the way in the middle. I want them somewhere kind of in between but on the outer edge bit. Again, the pattern will tell you exactly where to put them. I am winging it because, you know, it's me. When I say winging it, I'm not just eyeballing it. I'm actually using a ruler to make sure that they're all level. But I want them fairly far out, but not so far out that they're getting in the way. Which is how the pattern's written, and I reckon I'm guessing pretty close to the correct placement anyway. I did look at the picture before I started, I promise. All right, pop that down there. So now I've got this um, and you can tack them on. I'm actually just not going to. I'm going to pop them aside and do the next bit because that's now two pieces instead of six. And again with the elimination thing. So this is my zipper panel in the center. I'm also going to uh, melt the ends of the zipper because it is fraying and I'm not okay with that. All my zipper thread, all my zipper tape that's like solid colours all come from the same person so therefore I assume the same factory but different one frays at different levels of annoyingness. Don't ask me why, they just do. Now a couple of things we're going to do here. First things first is I'm going to line these up like this. Um, and I'm also going to crack the zip, grab the end, and fold it down at like a 45 degree angle. 90 degree angle, not 45. Maths, people, maths. And I'm going to stitch and back stitch. And then I'm going to grab the other side and match it. One side always stitches better than the other, by the way. It's just, I don't know how it is. But you won't see this. This is just to help in a minute. Oh, that one's not going to stitch at all. That happens when you don't have enough tail. And it goes up first instead of down. That was my fault. Happens to me all the time. 
because I try not to waste too much thread in the tails and then that happens. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this and I'm gonna separate the whole thing because it's just easier. And then, so this is the print. It'll be underneath, so it doesn't really matter. We're gonna put one along there and one along this edge. So the furthest edges. If you've got print on the top, what you do is you put the print together like this and then you put the zipper right sides down. So like this, but either or. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip it along the edge. Wait, zipper right sides up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You've got to make your zipper, make sure that your zipper is right sides up on here and right side down on here. So you can put it, I usually stick it on this one, which is why I just confused myself, but it's fine. So, clip. And what we want to do is we want to tuck under a raw edge. So I'm going to stick some double-sided tape on the edge of all four of them. Because we're going to have, because we've got the tail, it goes at the tail end. There's always method to my madness, I promise. Sometimes I just, you know, do it in a different order. So, we're going to peel this off. I like to put it up against a some kind of a ruler. I do need to order a new one because this one faded way too quickly. Right? Or you can just put it up against each other. Right? So we need it to come so that these are perfectly even. It is important that they are even. It doesn't matter if you did it the wrong size according to the pattern. So long as these are perfectly even, you're not going to have a problem. If these are uneven, you're going to have a problem. Right. And then these obviously need to be the same length as those. They all need to be the same size. Now if that entails you having to turn under a slightly more than you thought, eh, so be it. It just means that your pocket won't cover as much ground as you originally intended. Also, my uh, lining is not ironed on as well as I'd hoped, so that's not really helping my cause right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold it back and I'm going to put another piece of double-sided tape so that it stays together while I'm trying to turn the edge over. And the reason this is not sticking would be because I didn't leave the iron on it long enough when I was ironing. Not gonna lie, it was in a bit of a hurry when I was doing all of these. Oh, and that's come undone now. So, we're gonna line them up on each other. Perfectly like this. And then just fold it over so it's even. And so now I've got the two bits of double-sided tape. It's staying where it's told. Take from that what you will. Yes, I use more thread. I also could have got up and just ironed it more, but it would have required yet another stop in my video. You know, I was being lazy, so we didn't do that. Okay. So now that that's done, we're going to clip that on, like so. Then we're going to take our other piece and sandwich the zipper in between. Not that way, this way. So your folded edge matches up with your folded edge. It should all match up beautifully. I don't know why I'm grabbing more clips. They're right in front of me. Ta-da! And so then, once you've folded over the ends, these can only go one way. So, right sides down. Line it up. Clip 
along. You can use as many or as few clips as you feel comfortable with. Also, that came undone again. And then we're going to grab this one and right sides all together, sandwiching the zipper. We're going to add in this one. Why do I not just do three at a time? Because it, I personally think it takes me longer to try and line up all three. Two just seems to work better for me. You can do all three at the same time if that's your thing. So, joining stitch length. We also don't want to stitch over that because if we do then we won't get our zipper on so starting at the end where we folded it i'm going to stitch and i'm going to back stitch needle down we're going to go down and i'm just going to stop here so we're not going to stitch across that end we're just going to leave it like that. Then we can grab the next one and I'm going to stitch over the top and you'll notice that I've got opposite sides up so I can go in the same direction. If I wanted to go the opposite way I would have started here. Alright, then we get to here and we stop and we back stitch. Pull it out trim it off, trim off the tails at the start. I am also, and this is one of those few times I will cut zipper, I'm going to just chop off some of this end so that it turns nicer. With that much chunk in the corner it tends to not behave as well as we want so I just cut off a little bit. It's the only time I cut zipper once it's, unless it's you know cutting off an actual piece. So we're going to start in that corner, pull it out. It'll be tricky to push it out. So what I do is I grab the zipper tape and pull on it until it comes out. And then this will look like it's not even, right? See how it doesn't sit evenly? It's because the vinyl's pushing against the lining. So the first thing we want to do is line up the edges, the raw edges of the fabric. We're basically going to ignore everything else and just go along the edge of the fabric matching it up. It doesn't actually want to but it does match because they were cut the same size. It's just being stubborn because of the vinyl. But nothing will defeat me. And the best way to deal with this problem is I'm going to stitch here first. I'm going to go up to a four stitch length. And we're going to stitch the raw edge first, but just nice and close so that it'll be hidden later. Then we can top stitch the rest because now it will sit evenly. So we're going to go over that raw edge, needle down, pivot. Even though I cut it and sewed it at a right angle, it tends to be a bit curved because of the zipper. So I like to stitch it as a curve. It makes it look like it's meant to be that way. See, it all lined up beautifully. It was just trying to trick us. So let's do the same to this one. So again, we're going to turn it through. And I'm going to pull on that zipper to pull it out. And then I'm just going to go along. I also make my clips face the vinyl because we want to top stitch it and you want the two clips facing the right way. See, it doesn't want to behave at all, but it will. It learns. Beautiful. So same thing. 
starting at the raw edge we're going to stitch it oh that sounds bad I made a nice big knot I will cut that off in a minute needle down pivot we're going to go around the bend and then top stitch down the vinyl now I can trim all that off you also want to make sure you shut this end too and then all my back stitching will be lost in a seam lining pieces we're going to fold this in half and I'm going to clip it this time I'm just going to put a clip on it now here's where we want to start thinking a little bit and again design option but I'm actually going to start with the one that's got the zipper pocket so that the zipper is going to close in the same way so you want this right sides up and we want to match it so that's the closed side and then that's the closed side and again personal preference but I just like to do it I also forgot to find my centers on this piece earlier up the top and it is relevant so take this one raw edge to raw edge matching up that center And then we can grab the other one, do the same thing. So now we're going to grab these and these are going to go on top. So we're making a really big sandwich. Like that. And then this one. Again, you can tack them if you want to. I possibly should have, but you know. What's done is done. And I've just put two clips where those are and now they won't move. Okay, joining stitch length again. Stitch, back stitch, off we go. Next one, we're just going to join it in and chain stitch it. Stitch, back stitch. Back stitch. Pull it out. Trim it off. I'm like, my snips are being weird. It's because they've lost a screw. Now we have... A zipper inside so I'm gonna tack these up the top here just so that they don't annoy me because I know otherwise they will annoy me as bad as that sounds they will so tails so that they don't poke out later and annoy me next you don't have to backstitch. It's just a habit that I have. It's not a bad habit, to be honest. It's just to hold them in place until later. So the next thing I want to do is take this zipper, fold it against itself, and clip it so that it doesn't get caught in our seam allowances in a minute. So clip out of the way. Make it as flush that way as you can. And that's our insides done. 
So now we just need to do our gusset piece. So we're going to construct it the same way as the exterior. So we need the center and the center of this side. Oop. We're not going to put that zipper on till later either, by the way. I do that last. Um, so you can either stitch a little ending part on or you can use a zipper end. I'm going to use a zipper end. I just haven't got one out of the cupboard yet. So again, we're clipping everything together, making sure it all fits. Curves always require more clips, by the way. So let's go this way. Clip that up to this edge. And then move our way down towards the corner. stitch all the way around you don't want to sew onto here so just keep that in mind while we're stitching right that's enough clips move them out of the way go again outside comes close so I just want to make sure I didn't get it but we're good also my corners look lovely there's no pleats not that you could really tell in this print anyway but always check because it's easier to fix now than when you finish the bag and realize there's a problem it's not fun having to unpull half a bag most people don't they just sell the bag off as like a second and charge less um, so all that hard work and you don't really get paid for it so it's always just good to check. Again, clips facing the gusset piece, getting to the corner, sewing it down. And then other side. It is looking really cool. I'm actually quite excited about this bag. Now, if you want to, you can actually, and I'm going to, now that I think about it, I'm actually going to. So, I'm going to leave a hole in the bottom of this bag to turn the bag through because when I turned that lining earlier, it was quite stiff. So I want as big a gap as I can possibly get. And I'll show you what we're going to do to achieve that. So we just clip it all as normal. And then I'll just take off the clips of where I don't want to stitch. Right? So I want to leave a gap at the flat bit you always want to leave it at the flat bit so that'll be my last stitch so i'm going to take out them and that one so i'm going to have that gap there now yes it is about the same size as the zipper pocket but it will be easy to turn through there rather than the zipper pocket so depending on how firm your outside is you may want to follow me in this gap leaving mission 
if you've watched enough of my videos, you know I don't do things unnecessarily. Oh, and I've run out of bobbin thread again. I'd say this uses a solid two bobbins because the other one wasn't full when I started. Let me make it is all fixed, so we're just gonna go back up to where we ran out of thread and just go again. I clipped the corner, so or re-clipped the corner. And then once we get to pretty much the base, we're gonna backstitch and stop. Oh. Oh, it's not my moment, is it? And I just felt that that did something weird. So I'm just going to pull it out and do it again. My snips just died officially. Can you hear that? I can hear that. The bobbin thread's misbehaving. It gave itself a loop. Always a fun one. Um, always wise not to fully uh, fill your bobbin thread. It tends to misbehave a lot more. So I'm going to have to re-stitch all of that because the stitching was loose. We don't want loose stitching. These have like totally died, but I'll get through the video with them. One more to shroom. Okay, so we're going to turn the lining right sides out. Also, this is why we don't put our zipper on yet. It is much easier to function without it there in the way. Okay, lining of bag, inside back of bag. So, this is my front panel here where my hand is. So against the front panel, I want the slip pocket and I want the zipper on the back. I think. Yes, yes I do. You can do it the other way if you wish. It doesn't necessarily matter. It's just your preference and another thing that you should maybe think about. So, I'm going to start at the seam allowances because I want all of them to line up and then everything else in between should just kind of fall into place. You also may want to push your zipper panel down so that it's out of the way if it's in your way. If it's being stubborn and annoying you while you're trying to pin stuff, push it down and then the bag will hold it down out of your way. I'm going to put one clip in between there and then we just want to add clips along here so it doesn't shift and misbehave. Right, other side. Do, 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 do. Right, clipped together. We're going to lift up our needle so that we can slot it under. And then I'm just going to stitch all the way around. It doesn't matter where you start. This is not a final top stitch. You don't see it. So you can start wherever you're comfortable doing so. I'm also going to move this so I don't drop it. Because I can see that happening. And you just lift the bag up as you go around the seams. And it should all pretty much just fall into place. Oops a daisy. When you get back to the start, dodgy snips. Okay, 
Voila. So now we're going to actually domestic friendly users. We are going to first clip a little kind of V or a U out of all the parts where the seam allowance is overlapped. Um, if you're on an industrial, this is not absolutely necessary. But what it will do is our top stitching will be less bulky in those areas. So, do it, don't do it, it's up to you. I do it to remind you guys to do it, especially if you don't have a machine like this. This one could go over it fine without me doing it, but not everybody has one of these machines. So, I'm going to make a fist and I'm essentially punching it towards the opening. Picking a corner, doesn't matter which corner, and then I'm just going to slowly work the bag through the hole. I like to kind of use my thumbs to shove it. I'm definitely a shover. And then when you get about halfway, I kind of switch to maybe pulling. I'm going to tuck all of the lining. And then I'm going to grab and I'm going to do this with my hand. So I'm not just going to pull straight out. That's how you break things. But I'm going to kind of fold them out. Because it's gentler, less rough on your seams and less likely to break things. Ta-da! Then I'm just going to punch it out. I'm also going to grab my turning stick and I'm going to run it along the seam of the exterior. It's going to give it a firmer grip on being pushed out. It won't damage the bag while still pulling out your seam for you. If you don't have a turning stick, I do highly recommend them. They are amazing. You don't have to buy them for me. You can get them from um, music stores. They are a flute cleaner. And the reason I like them over chopsticks and stuff is the ends aren't as pointy. I have put several chopsticks through a seam of a bag because it was too rough. Um, right, so this is our lining. I've pulled the lining through the zipper pocket and we're going to stitch the bottom of our bag closed. And when we get to the other end, we just backstitch to lock it in and hide all the gaps. Push the lining back into the bag and then I'm just going to pull the zipper pocket out and we're going to tuck in the raw edge. So I usually do about a knuckle's worth. I know that's not an official thing but if I use my knuckles as the guide like that and then pinch it together, that is how I do it without clips. You can also rub that seam along a table to get it creased if you like. Or you can iron it there if you've got an iron next to you and handy. I do not, so I don't do it. All right, tuck it in, zip it up, and then this edge here is our top. So we want to fold it all the way over like that. So it's black on the outside and red on the inside. That's how I chose to do it. Obviously, you can just do it all the same color. You don't have to be as fancy as me. And then just for something different, we're going to go over to my um, cylinder arm machine and we're going to top stitch it there. Otherwise, you might want to turn your bag inside out to top stitch along here. That is your choice. Um... And if you're struggling with these corner bits, you might want to get your um, pliers and squish them flat. I don't really have an issue here, but depending on what fabric you've used, yours might be sitting differently to mine. I might come finish this side first. So I'm going to have all my clips. See, that's a bad habit. I want all my clips facing outwards. Like so because I'm going to top stitch it from the outside on the cylinder arm. Now you can do it on this machine. I have done it several times. I just feel like using the other one. There is nothing wrong with wanting to play with all of my toys. So 
So I'm clipping all the way around because it'll be quicker to top stitch if it's all clipped in place. And you'll notice I'm still not putting all the hardware on. We don't want to do that till like the end. The end is for the hardware. We're not up to the end yet. So you can also fold that zipper panel down if it's in your way. All right, I'm going to go and stitch this off camera because it is way too messy over there to do it on camera. And then we'll come back. I'll show you how to do the last of the hardware. Right. So we are all done with our top stitching, which is lovely. So now we need to put our zipper on. I'm going to take both ends of the zipper, line them up, and then install the zipper. Now this might take a few times, but you want to make sure it's even. So always cut it even. And then you want to zip it all the way up to make sure it's even at this end, because that's important. And so then when you're happy, which I got it first go, sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. And then I want to fold this over so it's like a point and then I'm going to shove the zipper end on like that. Shove it all the way in as far as it'll go. Oh no, my child has borrowed my um, electric. Here it is. He likes to play with this. Apparently it's one of his favourite things of mine as far as toys are concerned. And we've changed the end over and it's too big. So we have to go back to a smaller one. So these are great. They just magnetic pull in and out. It's like the quickest installation ever. That's better. With zippers so small, you need the smaller one. So we're going to put it through the hole like this. And then it will screw through the zip of teeth. Apparently I need another um, battery. Doesn't surprise me. Screw it in as far as it'll go. You want to be able to run your finger along the back so it's smooth. This is also magnetic. So you just magnetize them back in and shove it. Oops. Like that. Okay, so that's the zip. Oh, man. I did so well not dropping anything all video. Hold on. So these go on like this. And then we're going to take our handles, thread it through, fold it up, and clip them down. So I, I'm doing it this way because I wanted to see if I want a strap in. And I just, I don't think I do. I think it's pretty enough as it is. So, first thing I'm going to do, line this all up beautifully. Squish a hole. And then I'm going to take it out. And that will be my guide for all of the other holes that we need to do. So, you line these up back to back. And then we just keep punching through the same hole. And that way all of your handles will be identical. Right? You can also measure it with a rivet press, uh, a rivet placement template. So you just want to make sure the ends are lined up and the sides is all squared off. One and two. So that's that done. Now we're going to grab some rivets and some caps. And the rivet press. There we go, so you can see better. And you can, if you want to, put these in, but it's not so necessary because they open. Oops, put that on the wrong side. So you can put them in there if that makes you feel better, then you only have to install it on one thing. Um, or you can just leave it empty and squish it out. Whatever you're more comfortable with is the official answer. I'm going to do it this way and then install it on the bag. 
except for the last one that's already installed on the bag. Squish it on, squish it under, and then this last one will just fold in half. In half, like so. You can do it either way, whatever makes you comfortable. So then we're going to grab the bag, and where the gap is here, I'm just going to feed the handle on and then this side we need to open the gate ring whichever way it opens and then slide it on and that's it handle installed let's do the other side as well so we want this side on the inside so you just hold it how you want see which way the gate rings going and then just thread it on Maybe. There we go. One. And so you want to make sure there's no twist. Although you can fix it if there is, which is nice. Like so. And your bag is all done. That's actually really cute. Alright, I'm off to take photos of it now, uh, but thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you for the next video. Bye-bye!